AI workloads are reshaping what modern infrastructure needs to look like. And open collaboration is at the center of that transformation. The Open Infrastructure Committee just released a new white paper titled Open Infrastructure for AI, OpenStack's Role in the Next Generation Cloud, which brings together insights from organizations building real-world AI platforms. And joining me today are Kendall Nelson, Senior Upstream Developer Advocate at the Open Infra Foundation, and Stig Telfer, CTO at Stack HPC. Kendall, let's start with you. Tell us about this white paper and why it's so significant. And maybe mention a few of the companies that are standing right next to you that contributed case studies for this white paper. Of course. So the white paper that we released today at the Open Infra Summit here in Europe, in, outside of Paris, is incredibly important because it helps explain to the larger community how OpenStack supports the AI workload. It covers a lot of content, everything from core scenarios in AI to the specific OpenStack services that support AI. And we had a number of case studies and reference architectures provided to us by other uh, organizations that are members of the Open Infra Foundation, such as Stack HPC, among uh, others like China Mobile, and um, I believe we have one from FPT Smart Cloud and uh, Rackspace as well, actually. Stig, before we talk about your involvement with this white paper, tell us about Stack HPC. Stack HPC is a um, open source consultancy business. Um, we we started the firm almost ten years ago to the day, and really the the motivation is how do we use um, cloud infrastructure, but open source cloud infrastructure, and specifically, how do we use that for scientific computing and research computing use cases? Our business is, um, we're up to about 35 or 40 people now, and um, and we're based mostly in, in Bristol, UK, and Poland and France. As we have been covering OpenStack and Open Infra for a long time, collaboration is a key part of its DNA. What did that process look like for this white paper and what kind of contributions did Stack HPC make? It's kind of testament to the way that OpenStack does things. So um, the, the, the project has this, uh, this concept of the four opens and, um, and this approach to doing everything in the public domain uh, also applied to the way that the white paper was constructed. So I think, was it, was it February or January we started this? Or Yeah, so very early in the year. Yeah, so... so um, Way, way back, um, Kendall initiated a, a bunch of meetings and invited people from the OpenStack AI working group. And, um, and really, the whole thing was sort of crowdsourced with contributions and um, voluntary donations of, of content and review and, and suggestions on structure uh, through that drafting and design process. It, it must be kind of intimidating for you, Kendall, actually, with um, you start with a blank sheet of paper. And um, at the end of it, you know, you get a fully drafted document, but certainly for the initial bits, it's, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it can't be easy. But anyway, so um, I was able to suggest some useful areas for, for content and maybe people to, to tap up to, to make contributions in some key areas. I guess in terms of the, um, the substandard contributions we made, uh, I was able to contribute a section on how to use um, high-performance networking within OpenStack cloud environments, and uh, specifically for, for AI workloads and use cases. And we also contributed a case study exemplifying this kind of real high-end environments that um, AI infrastructure embodies. And, um, and so we drafted that in, com in collaboration with um, our client partner, uh, 6G AI Sweden. Just you mentioned 6G AI, they are featured in the white paper with the fascinating case study. Can you walk us through what they are doing and how it highlights OpenStack's role in enabling AI infrastructure? 6G AI Sweden is a um, uh, it's an AI cloud service provider, and um, their their hardware that they that they operate it follows you know the latest uh, reference designs and sort of HGX uh, pod designs uh, from NVIDIA. But the software stack that they use builds upon open infrastructure and open infra and that includes OpenStack and other components, combining it with Kubernetes and other industry leading uh, technologies like that. So we work with um, a few entrants into the, uh, the sort of the cloud AI market. But um, I guess with uh, 6G AI, we're super excited uh, to be working with them uh, as so they're, they're adopters of this NVIDIA 
hardware reference architecture and they have a lot of very high-end um, hardware to work with. It's always a great challenge to work with this really high-performance kit. Um, I think the, the approach that they take, which is, you know, it's slightly different from buying everything from the NVIDIA ecosystem, um, it adds several advantages um, for a company. So um, this got a vendor neutral solution using open infra supports a lot of diversity and flexibility in the options that they can take. And a team that's prepared to you know, choose their own adventure uh, in terms of the, um, um, the hardware and the software that they use also has greater control over their costs and, um, and their operational expenses. So this, I guess, finally, the, the third point would be that, that an open ecosystem, when it moves so quickly, uh, particularly the AI software environment and the, the kind of technologies that come and go, and it provides opportunities then for companies to innovate and differentiate um, over their rivals. When I look at OpenStack and OpenInfra, the workloads are massive. They are very complicated, very challenging. But when it comes to AI, how is AI workload different from what OpenStack is often used for? Well, I think that OpenStack has continued to evolve and it's present in so many different industries and ecosystems and supporting so many different work, work uh, use cases is a like natural extension into AI of what OpenStack is capable of. So being able to use it with all of these other open source technologies like Kubernetes, it's, it's already being done. It's, I think, surprising to a lot of folks how many places OpenStack is. And I think it's going to be um, like continually growing. There's a lot of work that we can do in OpenStack as a community to build support for AI in addition to what already exists because everything is developing. Everything's moving so fast and the demand on the hardware is only going to continue to increase, especially because we see these workloads getting bigger and bigger and requiring more and more resources. Um, OpenStack just hit, uh, I made the announcement during the keynote today, but it was a, <laughs> a obscene amount of cores. Like we, we used to have the 100K core club and now we're well into the million K core club. And there are so many companies that are all running millions of cores of OpenStack. And we also learned in our most recent user survey that there are 20 of our member companies already running AI on top of OpenStack. So I think it's already almost becoming ubiquitous and we'll continue to head on that trajectory. Yeah, it was 55 million cores, wasn't it? Is that right? Yes, yes that's right. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a busy day. <laughs> you folks are here in Europe and digital sovereignty is a huge topic here. How is OpenStack enabling not just compute networking and storage, but also AI workloads so these organizations and countries do maintain their stand on digital sovereignty but also get benefits of these new technologies. It is a very relevant point uh, today and there's a lot of um, I guess uncertainty on, on several fronts. I guess they, technologically there's you know there's a certain amount of you know um, fear and uncertainty about what will happen with um, uh, AI's data consumption and, and, and the use of our, our data out in the cloud and how that applies. And I guess also, there, you know, there's a lot of political uncertainty in the world today, and that's causing people to think, well, what happens when um, the, the, um, the companies that we partner with in a sort of a public cloud environment, uh, what happens in the regulatory environment in their, in their home countries changes? And, and so there's, there's concerns around that. And I guess that's probably the two major driving forces around uh, this idea about digital sovereignty. And in particular, here in Europe, there's, there's a lot of movements around um, uh, having your own data and your own applications being running within the uh, jurisdiction of your own country. Yeah, I actually just had somebody the other day talk about how they think the direction of AI is going to be where there are like regional AI models. And I think that that makes a lot of sense because of the desire for digital sovereignty and all the geopolitical factors that are at play right now in the world. Can you talk about what is next for the Open Infra AI Working Group and how can the broader community get involved or contribute to this effort? That's a really good question. The, the work is nowhere near done. We have so much more to accomplish. So we started with this OpenStack for AI white paper 
And I think one of the next big deliverables we're going to try to work on as a community is a product containers for AI work white paper. So we'll have to really work closely with the product containers community to collect content similar to how we did for the OpenStack for AI white paper. But another thing that we're trying to do and continue to push is um, just a lot of show and tell. A lot of people that aren't as embedded in OpenStack or are less aware of how OpenStack can serve the AI workload want to know the technical details and challenges of all of it. And while the white paper, I think, is going to be a huge resource for folks, we have already had two different show and tells um, as part of our meetings where companies explain what their stack looks like, what they're leveraging, how they're using OpenStack to meet the needs of AI workloads, and what those workloads actually look like. So Stack HPC was actually one of those show and tells with uh, Humboldt University uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we hope to have more in the future. I think it would be nice uh, um, to get uh, Harry from ECMWF. Oh, so yes. earlier today, there was a presentation from the staff at ECMWF about how they can run generative AI to augment the, the weather forecasting they generate. And this can be um, operated on an open stack environment. So it's um, uh, quite an important result for the, um, uh, for the open stack cloud infrastructure that they operate in ECMWF, that they can now use the, um, their, their sort of AI toolkits and the GPUs they have in their cloud uh, to generate weather models on demand. Open stack has powered some of the large scale infrastructure for years. How is it evolving to meet the performance and the scalability demands of AI and machine learning workloads today? I think that like there's a lot of work to be done still, obviously, but we've also made a lot of uh, changes in the last two releases, even in um, Epoxy and Flamingo that just came out in October uh, to support like ECI pass through. There's a lot of work still to be done in GPU enablement, though it's already usable at this point. Um, I think what we really need is for folks that are using um, OpenStack to support their AI workloads to bring feedback into the community. We need to better understand the challenges that they're encountering and be able to tie that to work that needs to be done in the particular OpenStack services. I know OpenStack Nova um, is planning to meet at the project team gathering in a couple weeks, um, and they'll definitely have AI on the agenda, along with a, a lot of other projects. The question about the, the level of performance that um, OpenStack can deliver, uh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's um, OpenStack supports uh, not just virtual machines and containers, but also bare metal infrastructure as well. And some of the most demanding workloads are delivered through an OpenStack environment using a combination of a small amount of virtualization for the, uh, the sort of control and command uh, coordination processes. And then the, the majority of the workload will be delivered by a bare metal compute environment, which OpenStack will be provisioning and operating and managing using the, um, uh, the properties it has of multi-tenancy and isolation. No, there are a lot of organizations who are just starting to explore AI infrastructure. What's your advice on adopting open technologies while also maintaining flexibility and control? Um, what is my advice? That's a good question. So, I guess I mean I'm I'm not I'm not a um, unbiased person in this matter, being seeing as I make my living doing exactly that. But the um, the approach that I I would recommend is is to um, is to work in a sort of a an iterative process of um of a design and deployment now i guess the big challenge that a lot of the the neo clouds have is they get the hardware and straight away they have to sweat that stuff they have to get it to market as quickly as possible to uh, in order to um uh, get you know the return on the investments that they've made which makes it really hard then to you know develop and improve and iterate on the solution so the the that kind of uh, devops agility that they need uh, to be able to bring a solution to market I mean, it has to be done really quick. So um, the, I guess the advice I'd have is going to surprise no one, but is to come to a specialist consultancy in the, in the area. <laughs> but, yes. you know, I can't help being biased there. So I think the primary advice I would give to people interested in 
understanding how uh, OpenStack can support AI is really to get involved in the community, which is also probably not a surprising answer for me. It's uh, a topic I've been very passionate about in the past is just get involved, be around in the open source project, talk to people, ask questions because there are likely other people with those same questions. And specifically with this open stack for AI white paper that we've published, if there's content missing, let us know. And if you have the knowledge, we would love to make those updates and changes, especially because AI is only going to continue to develop and OpenStack will continue to grow to support it. But we need everybody's perspective and everybody's knowledge to be successful and be the ubiquitous open source AI platform. Yeah, the, the white paper is a great result. And, um, you know, if the, if the working group can keep, keep up with developments and, and keep the thing up to date and accurate, I mean, that, that by itself would be a tremendous outcome, let alone anything else that happens. Kendall Stig, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your insights. It's clear that open collaboration through open infra and projects like OpenStack is playing a crucial role in building the next generation of AI-ready infrastructure. And for those watching, if you are exploring how open technologies can power your AI workloads, make sure to check out the Open Infra Foundation and Stack HPC. And don't forget to subscribe to TFR, like this video, and share it with your teams. Thanks for watching.